Chapter 10 Members needed to be kept in line all the time. Our way of life required a lot of energy, and many people would leave if they got too comfortable in the rest of the world. We had to live in constant fear of making a mistake to stay saved. The church told us we were being monitored by God, but the church was always watching too. This included the real possibility that the church would scorn you if you were seen doing something you shouldn't. If you offend God, you can privately change your ways and ask for forgiveness. Church members, however, are right in front of you. Beyond that, a more potent form of control is to have the salvation of others hanging in the balance of your behavior. We have a duty to save everyone that we can. The church used a passage to say we must not do anything that could cause someone else to sin. They might see us, and because of our ambiguous example, start sinning. If you are supposed to be a good example, and are seen in a casino parking lot by a gambling addict, that person might think it would be okay for them to go in the casino, like you. They might fall into sin, even though you were actually going next door to the restaurant. Avoiding the appearance of evil as we called it was always on my mind. This was a very powerful control mechanism, because now it was not up to the member as to what they should not be doing. There wasn't a good way to disagree with the fact that drinking alcohol around a struggling alcoholic could pose a problem for that person. Now, even if you think it's okay to drink in moderation, conforming to what the church thinks instead is a matter of salvation. The church's standards become your standards, whether you like it or not. Members are now controlled all the time, even if church people are not around. Your actions might eternally destroy an innocent person. This was hell-worthy, but the positive spin on it was that we must do it for the good of others. That way you could feel good about each time you followed one of the church's directives. Don't sit in the bar of a restaurant, don't wear something that could be mistaken for jewelry, and nearly everything can be put into this category. You have to go above and beyond again, just like we've seen all along this church path. So God was watching all the time, including your thoughts. People outside the church might see a member's bad example and reject God. Many church people were watching very closely for something to talk about. In the future, there would be a time that my fiancé and I decided to break a church rule. We held hands, which was against the rule that there should be no romantic physical contact between unmarried people. Our chaperone agreed to let us walk in a public place by ourselves for a bit. We were in a big city, yet a church member happened to drive by and see us. That member confronted me the next service, since they didn't know who the person was. I was let off the hook, because I was able to say the person was my fiancé. Otherwise there was a chance that I would be brought to the pastor, so that we could talk about whether I could continue to be involved in the ministry or not. Maybe being watched by God, church members and people everywhere still wasn't enough. Next we will learn that the devil and demons are also out to get us.